guys, I'm Nate. And I'm Ashley. And we're back with another video in our series where we're looking at the entire narrative of the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. And we want to trace this, this story of like, what is going on? Because often we look at our Bibles and we're really attracted to the New Testament because it makes more sense. So in this video, we want to look at the whole narrative. And so today we're going to be in Act 2, which is Genesis, about Genesis 3, where sin enters the world. So, Ashley, what happens in Genesis 3? Yeah, so there's a lot of stuff going on in Genesis 3, but it focuses on one main point, which is when sin enters the world. So, the story of Genesis 3 really sets up the stage for how, how humanity lives with God. Part of being human is having the freedom to choose, like to choose a life with God and, or a life of the world and to live in temptation and whatnot. And that's exactly what was revealed to us in Genesis 3. In the previous video, we mentioned that one thing that God instructed Adam and Eve not to do in the garden was to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, or else they would die. While in the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve encounter a serpent. And this serpent, despite what God has said, this serpent goes ahead and says, hey, it's okay to eat from the tree over there, you won't die, you're gonna experience tons of wisdom, you'll know the difference between good and evil, and you'll be more like God. And it was super appealing for Adam and Eve. So Eve then chooses to go against God and what he had said for them to do and tried to give instructions for, and she picked a fruit from the tree. So then both her and Adam ate the fruit and their eyes were open to be more like God. They now instantly knew what was right and what was wrong. The first thing that they noticed was that they were naked. So immediately they hid behind some leaves to cover themselves and to cover their shame. God came to walk in the garden to meet them, but Adam and Eve were hiding because they didn't want God to see what they had done. Eve explained that the serpent had deceived her, but they still disobeyed his instruction. This sin then leads into immediate and long lasting effects between God and humanity, which God begins to list out in the rest of the chapter. He then clothes Adam and Eve to cover their shame and their nakedness. So we talked about what it means to choose something and to choose a life with God or with the world in temptation. So Nate, what is free will and what is autonomy and how does that all work? Yeah, so in the, in the garden, Adam and Eve are given the choice to love and to respond to God in a certain way. And a part of being created is that we have this choice to accept God's love or to push it away, to listen to God's law or to throw them out. So the temptation in the garden is a threat of their choice. There's this fancy word called autonomy. And autonomy means choosing oneself as the source for determining what is right and what is wrong, rather than relying on God's word for direction. It is basically deciding that you are a greater judge than God, than anyone else on the topic that you need advice on. So Adam and Eve decide that they know better than God on this topic of what's best for them, and then they decide to eat the fruit. Later, they realize that maybe God was onto something, and that they should have probably listened. But this choice separates them from the love of God, and it has major consequences. And at this moment, sin enters the world. And our freedom to choose in the garden results in that separation from God. Because you see, like, love requires that choice. It required humans to have that choice to sin or to draw close to God. So what changes in our relationship and Adam and Eve's relationship to God going forward? Yeah, so now that sin has entered the world, it changes absolutely everything about our lives going forward. First off, Adam and Eve do not immediately die from this decision of biting into the fruit, but something inside of them does. The death mentioned in Genesis 3 is the twisting of relationships in general, and here more particularly with the relationship with God. Their sense of who they are and their relationship between the two of them is completely shattered. They also immediately become self-conscious of their nakedness and try to cover themselves up. 
like we said before, they now experience shame. And the worst of all, their relationship with God has been broken and they go and hide from him in fear. God then punishes Adam and Eve along with the rest of humanity with a set of things listed in the rest of Genesis 3. So because of sin entering the world through this with Adam and Eve, there is now separation between our relationship with God. The effects that Adam and Eve experienced, we also do too. But even with separation and brokenness, God does not give up with his purpose for us by any means. As Adam and Eve flee from him, he earnestly seeks them out and is in constant pursuit for them, just as he is for us and the rest of creation. But what we can take away about God's character from this is that he is an always faithful God despite us being unfaithful to him. And we will continue to discover this theme throughout the rest of the Bible story. So powerful. I love that this entire section, despite sin entering the world and this, this new struggle for humanity, is that prior to Adam and Eve being sent out of the garden, God clothes them. The book we are reading together to kind of discuss this says this, in the Old Testament, to remove someone's clothes could signify their disinheritance, their loss of what they were owed. God's provision of clothes for Adam and Eve is a sign to them that he has not given up on his purpose for them. They are still to bear his image in this world. They are still to inherit the earth. I think that's so powerful because our mandate hasn't changed. We're still to go out and be a blessing to the world, even though there's this new challenge of being separated from God by sin. Thanks for watching uh, as we unpack this Act 2 about sin entering the world. Our next video is going to be on Act 3, which, which is looking at what happens when Adam and Eve move out of the garden. What is the rest, like Act 3 is massive. It looks at Genesis 4 until the New Testament. And so we're gonna be unpacking this slowly because there's so much in there. And this is a part of the Bible that we don't know as well. So thanks for watching.